16 is saying find the integral open your brackets 3x squared plus 8x minus 5 close your brackets dx now when you look at this integral you find that it doesn't have limits it doesn't have limits since it doesn't have limits it means it is an indefinite integral it is an indefinite integral it doesn't have limits there so what we are going to do we are going to integrate each term now when you are given an integral what you're supposed to do is to add the power of x plus one divided by the same power let's do that so we have any integral ax to the power n dx is equals to ax to the power n at the 1 divided by the same power which is n plus 1 plus a constant this constant is because we don't have limits so we are going to uh, integrate them each term we are going to integrate each term so what we are going to do is we are going to say 3x add the 1 to this uh, power 2 divide it divide the same power so we are saying 2 plus 1 plus 8x to the power there's a power 1 here add plus 1 which is 1 plus 1 divide by the same power minus any base to the power 0 is equals to 1 so there's a uh, x to the power 0 here this 5 is the same as 5 times x to the power 0 which is a 1 so add the 1 there divided by 0 plus 1 we are not supposed to forget the constant since we don't have limits so what we are going to get is 3x to the power 3 divided by 3 8x squared divided by 2 minus 5x to the power 1 divided by 1 plus the constant k divide 3 into 3 you get a 1 which is going to give us x cubed divide 2 into 8 we are going to get a 4x squared so our answer will be x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus k don't forget the constant k so question b is saying the diagram below shows two triangles a and b the diagram below shows two triangles a and b describe the single transformation which maps triangle a onto b now when you look at the transformation from a to b you find that the shape has not changed it is still the same it has not become larger and it has not rotated so this is a translation now what we are supposed to do is to count how many steps it has moved in the x direction and how many steps it has moved in the y direction so you are going to find that it moved six steps in the negative direction and two steps in the y direction positive steps so our answer will be a translation t maps triangle a onto b with a translation vector negative 6 2 that is a column negative 6 2 we continue question 17 is saying in the diagram below a b and c are three points on level ground the bearing of B from A is 0, 0,62 degrees and angle B, A, B, C is equal to 128 degrees. C is due east of A. Find the bearing of C from B. So when they say find the bearing of C from B, it means that go to B. Make a reference to the north at B. So what is the angle from north B to C? We are looking for this angle here. So we are going to take it step by step. We are going to get our reference from the north, which is that. So now when you look at N1 and N2, you find that those two are parallel lines. Since they are parallel lines, we can always find alternate angles. We can always find alternate angles. It means that if this is 62 degrees, the alternate angles are equal. That should be 62 degrees. This angle here should be 62 degrees. So we are going to subtract 62 from 128 degrees. We are going to remain with a 66. So that when you add 
62 plus 66, you get 128 degrees. So this is 62 degrees because they are alternate angles. So we remain with a 66 here. Now the question is saying find the bearing of C from B. So we are looking for this angle here. So since we know that angles on a straight line add up to 180, we'll subtract 180 degrees minus 66 to give us the bearing of C from B. Let's do that. So our bearing of C from B will be equals to, we'll subtract 66 from 180 degrees, which is going to give us 114 degrees. That is our answer. What is the bearing of A from C? So they are saying, make your reference to the north at C. When they say from, stand at that letter after the word from. So we are at C. Make your reference from the north since it is a three-figure bearing. A three-figure bearing has only one reference, which is the north. So we are moving from the north to C to A. So you are going to find that the bearing of A from C is equal to, since this is a right angle, you are going to subtract 360 degrees minus 90 degrees, which is going to give us 270 degrees. That is our answer. We continue. Question 18 is saying, the diagram below shows a plane figure made of congruent semicircles. Angle AOB, which is that one, angle AOB, uh, we have angle AOB is equals to 90 degrees, so that is a right angle. Describe fully the symmetry of the figure. So they are saying, how many times are you supposed to rotate this so that it fits on itself, so that it has uh, the same orientation and at what angle? So we are going to say figure A, B, C, D has a rotational order of 4 about center O and through 90 degrees. So when you rotate it 90 degrees, it's going to fit on itself at, from the center, which is the origin. When you rotate it another 90 degrees, it will fit on itself. So it will fit on itself four times in 360 degrees. So if you rotate it, it's going to fit on itself four times. So we are saying figure A, B, C, D has a rotational symmetry of order four about center O and through a 90 degrees. We continue. Question 19 is saying the functions F and G are defined by f of x is equals to 2x minus 3 and g of x is equals to 3x. Find f inverse of x. Find f inverse of x. So when you're looking at functions, we always have the domain and the range. So when you're looking at a, an inverse, you are making the range into the domain or the domain into the range. So what we are going to do, we are going to say f of x is equals to 2x minus 3, where does this f of x replace a y? Replace a y. So we are saying y is equals to 2x minus 3. Then from here, make x the subject of the formula. So we are going to say 2x minus 3 is equals to y. Transpose what is on the left, take it to the right. What is on the right, take it to the left. Then we'll move this negative 3 to the right to become a positive. To find the value of x, we'll divide both sides by 2. Our x will be equals to y plus 3 divided by 2. From here, where there's x here, we'll replace f inverse of x. And where there was y, it's a must, you replace x. So our answer will be f inverse of x is equals to x plus 3 divided by 2. That is our answer. Then we have g of f of x. We have g of f of x. Now this is a composite function where you have a function of a function. It means we have to combine these two functions. So what we are going to say is g of x is equals to 3x. Where there's x here, we are going to replace the whole lot of this function, which is 2x minus 3. We'll replace it where there's x. So say g of f of x is equals to 3 the function of x, meaning where there's x, we'll put 2x minus 3. Let's do that. So we are saying 3, open your brackets, 2x minus 3. Then from here, what are we supposed to do? 
we are going to expand. We'll multiply 3 times x to give us 6x. 3 times negative 3 give us a negative 9. So we are going to say our g of f of x is equals to 6x minus 9. That is our answer. Now, C is saying find g of f of 2, meaning we are going to get the 6x minus 9, and where this x will replace a, a 2. Where this x, we are going to replace a 2. So here, here where there's x, there, we'll replace a 2. Let's do that. So if we multiply 6 times 2, we'll get 12. 12 minus 9 will give us a 3. That is our answer we continue question 20 is saying in the diagram below a is the point 0 comma 4 and b is the point 2 comma 0 and o is the origin find the equation of a straight line through o which is parallel to the line a b now the equation of a straight line is y is equals to mx plus c the equation of any straight line is y is equals to mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept, where it passes through the y-axis. Now, since it's passing through all, we know that the y here is 0, so our y-intercept is 0. So, we'll find the gradient by saying m is equals to the difference in y with respect to the difference in x so we are going to call this a 0 comma 4 we'll call this 0 x1 we'll call that one y1 we'll call this one x2 and we'll call that one y2 so m is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so we are going to substitute <coughs> where there's y2 we'll replace a 0 where there's y 1 will put a 4. Where there's x2 will put a 2 and where there's x1 will put a 0. Let's do that. So if we subtract 0 minus 4, we we'll get a negative 4. If you subtract 2 minus 0, you get a 2. Our gradient will be equals to negative 2. Now what we are supposed to know is that every time you are given parallel lines, parallel lines have the same gradient. Parallel lines have the same gradient. So if you have two lines which are parallel, M1 will always be equals to M2. So our equation of the line will be Y is equals to M2, which is the equation, the, which is the gradient of the line passing through the origin. So we are saying Y is equals to M2X plus C. So we are going to replace where there's M2 here, we'll put a negative 2. So we are saying y is equals to negative 2x plus. Since it's passing through the origin here, our y is 0. So our uh, c, which is the y-intercept, is 0. Therefore, our equation will be y is equals to negative 2x. That is our answer. We continue. Question B is saying the heights of two similar cylinders are 4 centimeters and 6 centimeters. If the volume of the smaller cylinder is 48 cubic centimeters find the volume of the larger cylinder so we'll take it step by step volume of any similar figures is a cubed to b cubed so you are going to raise it to the power 3 since it is volume but before we do that we have to find the ratios of the heights which is 4 to 6 take that to its lowest terms it is the same as 2 to 3. So the ratio of the heights is 2 to 3. And then the ratio of the volumes should be raised to the power 3. So the ratio of the volumes will be 2 to the power 3 to 3 to the power 3. If you multiply 2 by itself 3 times, you get 8. Multiply 3 by itself 3 times, you get 27. So the ratio of the volumes is 8 to 27. Now from here, we are going to equate where there's 8, we'll put our 48. We want to find the value, of the volume of the larger cylinder, which we don't know. So where there's the larger volume, we are going to put x and then solve for x. So we say, therefore, 8 divided by 27 
is equals to we will replace the 48 here since it's the smaller uh, cylinder when you are looking at similar figures they are uh, direct proportion when one increases the other also increases so from here we'll cross multiply well we'll say 8 times x will give us 8x 27 times 48 will give us 1,296. To find the value of x, we divide both sides by 8. Our x is equals to 162. Therefore, the volume of the larger cylinder was 162 cubic centimeters. That is our answer.